Do you think? Uh, so it's 10 o'clock and I guess it's time to start. I'm going to give you a very short recap of what we talked about on Monday. So we said that we are going to look at the matrices and uh, linear algebra in the first part of this course. So what we did was to have a very short introduction to matrices and we said that when we do numerical analysis in order to solve a mathematical equation in a discrete way, uh, we are going to end up with matrices in different forms. And what we need to do is that we have to uh, learn how to do the operations and algebra related to the matrices. And we defined what a matrix is. So we said that we have an array, and this array has elements, as you see here, this A, A11, A12, these are just the elements on the first row. A matrix like A is going to have M, M rows and N, N columns. And as a result, we say that A has the size of M by N, which means that M multiplied by N number of elements in total. And we said that these elements can be either real or complex numbers. So then we moved on to the basic algebra or the arithmetic operations of the matrices. In particular, we talked about the addition and subtraction of two matrices. And we said that what we need to do is that first we should make sure that the two matrix, matrices that we are going to uh, add together or subtract from each other should have exactly same size. Both have to be M by N. Otherwise, we cannot do these two operations. And for addition and subtraction, we just go to the corresponding elements and do the addition and subtraction to those elements. Then we said that, OK, if we have a scalar that is going to be multiplied by a matrix, what we need to do is just we multiply each element of that matrix but that by, by that uh, scalar. So there is another uh, operation here that is called a matrix transpose, which means that we are going to switch the rows and columns of this matrix. And we call it A with superscript T, which is that A transpose. If A is equal to the AT transpose, it's transpose, then A is going to be called a symmetric matrix. But if A is equal to the uh, minus A transpose, then it is skew symmetric matrix. So we just went through an example, and now we are going to move on to the matrix matrix uh, multiplication. OK? So for that, I guess it's better to just we move on to the dot cam. Okay, very good. So we have two matrices, A and B. And we want to do matrix matrix multiplication. So it's there is a very important point here that if A is a M by K matrix, then B has to be K by N, which means that the these two dimensions of these two matrices have to be the same. Otherwise, we cannot do the matrix matrix of multiplication. So if we want to get this C as A multiplied by B, so this A is M by K, and B is K by N. So these two inner dimensions, the one that are close to each other, they have to be the same. I mean these two. Otherwise, we cannot do the matrix operic, uh, matrix matrix multiplication. So, and the trick is that when we have these two indices the same, the resulting matrix C, as a result of A multiplied by B, is going to be M by N. Okay? So we just remove this inner dimension K. By removing, I will explain what I mean. 
Okay, so this C is going to be M by N. So if we have this element of matrix C, some arbitrary Cij element, so how can we get the value of that? So what we do is that, okay, we have first index that is I, and that is referring to the ith row of the first, first matrix that is, uh, that is A in this case, okay? So the first index here is I, it means that we are going to look at row I of the first matrix that is A. So this is our matrix A. Okay? Of course, it's, it's like AI1, AI2 to AIK, because we said that A is M by K. So M rows, K columns. So we are just talking about the specific row of A. And the second <coughs> index of C is J, which means that we are going to look at only at the, uh, uh, at the Jth column of the second, second matrix, that is B. So we have this guy. And this is matrix B, K by N. All right? So, but we have to do some kind of contraction, which means that we need to do this. So can you tell me how many elements we have in this row vector here? Sir, we have k elements in this row vector. Exactly. We have k because we have k columns, and we have fixed row, right? Yes. So it's, the size of this row vector is k. How about this column? This is also K. Yes. So you substitute them together by dot products. Exactly. So we do dot product, which means that the first element of this is going to be multiplied by the first element, and then plus the second element multiplied by the second element of B, and we just continue that up to the end, which is the Kth element of the a, this, this row vector with the kth one from B. Okay? So what we do is that A i1 multiplied by B 1 j, so as you see this, the inner indices are the same, plus A 2 B 2 j, and we continue that until we get A i k multiplied by B k j. Right? And this is the contraction that I meant. Can you tell me what is the, the what type of, uh, what was the output of this summation? It's not a matrix or vector anymore. It's a scalar. It's just one value, right? And that is perfect because exactly we needed to have this one value, element Cij, so some arbitrary element, okay? So as you see, Doing matrix matrix multiplication is a bit more involved than doing addition and summation, uh, sorry, subtraction, but still we have a very clear algorithm to do that. So if I want to write this in a more kind of general way, I have this formula. So the, the element i and j of matrix C, that is multiplication of A by B, is going to be A I L B L J with summation over L. And this summation is exactly shown here. So this is like the inner index. So we get I throw from the first matrix multiplied by the Jth column from the second one. And we have to multiply the corresponding elements in these two and sum them together. And how many summation do we have? As we said, just the size of any of these rows or columns, which is k. And this is exactly that we need to have this summation from 1 to k. So as it was mentioned here, we can just write this as an inner product. Or you also know this as dot product, which means that if we have this row vector, and this is, we have this column vector. We just do this bracket, which is the inner product. And inner products just multiply the corresponding elements and sum them together, okay? 
Is that clear? Very good. So now what we want to do is that we move on to an example. So we have matrix A, we have matrix B, and this A is 2 by 3, the size. Two rows, three columns. And B is three columns, two, sorry, three rows and two columns. Can you tell me what would be the size of C, which is A multiplied by B? Please. Sorry? Two. Yeah? So exactly. So this C is going to be A, which is two, uh, 2 by 3, multiplied by B, which is 3 by 2, as we said. So then A multiplied by B. So this is three by, 2 by 3, and this is 3 by 2. So these are the inner indices. So the result C is going to be 2 by 2. OK? But it's trivial that if we just do like B multiplied by A, and the result could be 3 by 3, right? So if we had B by A, then B is 3 by 2, and A is 2 by 3, and this guy would result to some matrix D, which is 3 by 3. Okay, so it's very important, this order of multiplication. You are going to end up with a different value, different matrix. Okay, so it's very clear that A multiplied by B is not the same as B multiplied by A. As you see, even the size of the resulting matrices are not the same. Okay, so be very careful. It's not like summation or a subtraction that you can just... Uh, change the order. Okay, so now let's go back to what we have. We have A by B, so I just repeated the matrices here. So say that I want to get the first element of C. So first element is just C1, 1, 1. So the first index is 1, which means that row 1 of the first matrix, so this guy. And the second index is 1, which means that's the first column of the second. So let's multiply the elements. So it's 1 multiplied by 8 plus 2i, and this i is just uh, complex values, plus 3 by 0. All right? So I want to go to the second element, which is C12. Row one, second column. So it gets the, it, it's the, the first row here, but the second column. So multiply one by five plus two by minus two plus three i plus one. Okay? And we already know that C is going to have two by two. It has the size of two by two, so four elements. So that, then this guy, which is 3, 2, 1, second row of the first one, this guy, and the first column of the second matrix. So it's 4 multiplied by 8 minus, pi, minus 5 multiplied by i plus 2 multiplied by 0. So we, just, we can just continue this, okay? And what we get is that, okay, 8 plus 2i, and this is 0, is 5 minus 4, plus 3i plus 3, and here's 32, minus 5i. If I do the other one, it's just 4 multiplied by 5, plus 10, plus 2i plus 2. Sorry? Yeah. Yeah. So it's 20 plus 10, plus 12, plus 2i. So you just do this. I mean, to do the arithmetic and you get the final answer, okay? So, is there any question about matrix-matrix operation, how we should do it? By the way, I, I, will, I will scan these notes and I upload to, to, to the blackboard.
Perfect. Now we move on to the implementation in MATLAB. Of course, in MATLAB, what you can do is just write A star B, and that does the matrix matrix uh, multiplication. But of course, you should be careful that the size of A and B follows the convention that we, we mentioned. The inner size, inner dimension of those two have to be the same. But now assume that we want to hard code the matrix matrix operation in MATLAB. And the reason for that is that we would like to kind of get an idea how many operations or basic arithmetic operations do we need. So we have two matrices, A, M by N, then we have, sorry, M by K, B is K by N, and we want to do C A multiplied by B. So in MATLAB, so you can already use this, A star B, okay? It gives you the results. Of course, if the dimensions do not match, you will get an error message. But what we want to do is just to do this hard code, this operation here. So as you see here, we define the dimensions, this M, K, and N. And then we define two random matrices, A, M by K, and B, N, K by N. And then as a placeholder, we construct this C with all elements to be zero. And the dimension of C is M by N. Okay? It follows the convention that we talked about. So, but in contrast to what we had for addition and subtraction, here we have three loops. We have a nested loop compri comprised of three, four loops. Okay? So one loop is counting the rows of A. One is the J, which is thus the column of B. And, of course, we need this L for the summation. Okay? If you just remember, we said that Cij is AILBLJ. For any I and J, for this resulting matrix, we have this multiplication of A by B, and we have this summation L from 1 to K. And this is exactly what we do here. So this is the summation, and we need to put it in, uh, as the innermost loop. And of course, we would like to get the values of all elements of C, which means that we are counting over I and J, and I is going to change from 1 to M, and J is from 1 to N. And these two are these two loops. Okay? But the trick is that this summation has to be the innermost loop. Because for any I and J, we need to do that summation. All right? Very good. So can you tell me how many times in total this loop is going to run? I mean, the, the nested loop. So the, out, the, the, the most, I mean, the, the, this exterior one is just from 1 to M, so M, oh, yes, sorry. That's 200 by the outer, the loop of 1. Yes, and? Uh, the other one would run from the Exactly, so in total? Uh, uh, no, I mean, just say it, I mean, the, what multiply by what? Multiply. Uh, Exactly. So in total, we are going, so the first one, m times, for each of these i's, we are going to run this n by k, which means that in total, we are going to run this nested loop m by n by k. Okay? So, yes? Yes, but we, we, we are not there yet. Okay, okay sorry. Exactly. So how many times do we have, I mean, this, this loop to run? It's just m by k by n. But how many basic operations 
do we have per each of these iterations? Okay, let's look at it. So when we just provide the index, or we just fix the index of these uh, matrices, which means that we are pointing to a particular element in that matrix. So in this case, for this C, I, J, A, I, L, B, L, J, we are just exactly pointing to a specific element values. It's not the whole matrix. It's just a very, I mean, just one single value in that matrix. By every time we are changing it. So these are just numbers, just real numbers or complex numbers. These are not matrix because they're pointing to the elements. So we have, in each of these iterations, we have one multiplication here. It's just two, two numbers are being multiplied. So this is one operation. And what is the other operation? So we multiply these corresponding elements of A and B exactly as we did here. Then we have to sum them again together. And to what exists in a bin, because we are going to compute this summation. So this is the second operation. So two basic arithmetic operations. So we have a loop that repeats m by n by k times. And for each of these iterations, we have two basic operations. So then what is the total number of operations for the whole thing? We just multiply these two together, right? So this is, we are going to run this loop this times, and we have two operations per loop. So the total number of operations is two M N K. And this is the one the what you mentioned. Okay. All right. So in a particular case, if M is equal to N is equal to K, then this cost is going to be two N cube. Uh, we, we don't care about this multiplication, but the order is important for us, and we say that the number of operations is of order of n cube. Okay? And if you remember what we have for the addition and subtraction, that was an n square. Okay? So which means that for kind of to compare between matrix, matrix multiplication, and just addition or uh, subtraction, you see that we have n times more operations. Okay, for the same size of matrices. So if you increase the dimension in each of these two, uh, the, the size in each of these two dimensions by 10, then the number of operation is going to increase 1,000 times. Okay, and that is very important because when it comes to the programming, even on the supercomputers, this is something very important. One of the main things that kind of slow down the, uh, the, the this, the numerical simulation of a process are these nested loops and this type of operations. Okay? But of course, I mean, there are different ways to kind of uh, avoid this issue and try to kind of make, make it like uh, less computationally demanding. Perfect. So is there any question? Okay, with this, we are going to finish this elementary uh, uh, operations. Oh, no, actually, there is one thing that I have to mention. So these are the properties of the matrix-matrix uh, multiplication. So if we have this scalar multiplied by A, so we can do this operation and then multiply the resulting matrix by B. And this is exactly equivalent to say, okay, I'm going to move this constant C and multiply it first by the second matrix, and the result uh, has to be multiplied from left by the first matrix. Or you just say that, okay, first do the matrix-matrix operation, and the result have to be multiplied by that scalar, or the constant value. 
And we have associativity that holds, which means that if you have three matrices, A, B, and C, and you want to multiply them, then you, what you can do is that first you multiply by A by B, and then by C, or you say that, okay, first the second and the last matrices, or we just do it from the left and one by one. Then we have commutativity that doesn't hold, as we talked about. The order of the multiplication is important, so it's just about A, B is not the same as B, A. And we have distributivity, which means that if we have A plus B multiplied by C, then you can do the multiplication of A by C and then do the summation and also B multiplied by C. We just distribute the, I mean, the multiplication and the summation. Uh, but if we have a be equal to zero, does it imply that A or and B are zero? Nope. And this is exactly in contrast to what we have for the scalars. If A multiplied by B is zero, okay, maybe just the arithmetic worked in a way that all elements became zero. It doesn't mean that A and B were necessarily zero. Okay? So be very careful. This is exactly opposite to what we have for the... Uh, yes, please. Uh, just to clarify, associative, it doesn't matter which order, right? So it could be C, A, B, or... Yeah. And then we have this transpose. So if we multiply A by B and then the, do the transpose, is equivalent that we first do the transpose of A and B and then multiply them together. And we are going to use this, I mean, later, maybe this course and also the courses that come after this course, I mean, the next semester. These are very important properties. But after a while, you, they, they become kind of trivial to you. Okay? So, any question or comment? Yes, please. Sorry? You mean here? Yeah. If I understood you, you're saying that uh, we should just keep it AT by BT? Yeah. No, 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 that's true. <laughs> Okay, uh, just an example. Okay, A is M by K. Yes, yeah, sorry. B is K by N, okay? Which means that A transpose is K by M and B transpose is N by K. And let's try this to see if it holds. So A multiplied by B this is m by k, k by n, so the resulting is m by n. Of course, it should be transposed. But the other side, b transpose t is like k by n, and a transposed is going to be no, no, sorry, sorry. It has to be n by k, I mean the whole thing after transpose, and the at is k by m, right? And again, we, we, we have this. But if we do it the other way, it's not going to work. Sir, my extreme apologies for bringing up this again. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> but, 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 but by the way, I should ask you, is it a better way than just going through the slides? If not, I'm going to just look at this. I mean, just do it via slides. Which one do you prefer? Let's vote. Writing, hands up. Okay, done. Thanks. But I, I try to, I hope you see it in a good way. Sorry. But the other option is that I use these uh, electronic pens. Don't you like it? Because usually students do not like that. 
Okay. Very good. And I, I try to be uh, to have a good handwriting. Sorry. <laughs> so very good, very good. Questions, remarks, comments. Perfect. So now we are going to move on to a very, very important subject, and that is. Uh, We are going to talk about so it is matrix inverse and determinant. So as a motivation, if we have A as a scalar, then A inverse, which is 1 over A, multiplied by N. So what does it become? It's because one, it becomes 1, right? Of course, if A is not 0. So this is 1 over A. So do we have kind of a similar thing for matrices? So if A is N by N, then our question is that A inverse multiplied by N, and since it's a square matrix, it's N by N, I mean, we can just switch this to A multiplied by A inverse. And the nice thing is that this becomes I. And this is something that we call identity matrix. Are you familiar with it? Okay. So in this case, A inverse and A are both of size n by n, which means that n i becomes also n by n. And this i is going to be a matrix with 1 over the principal diagonal and the rest of the elements 0. Fine? Very good. So the answer to the first motivation question was that, yes, we can have inverse operations for the square matrices. Be careful. We are just talking about square matrices. And it's kind of similar to what we have for the scalar or just normal algebra, that A inverse multiplied by A is equal to A multiply by A inverse, and the answer is that what we get is just an identity matrix. So it's quite a strange thing, like we have, we have a matrix and we would like to compute its inverse. So what does it mean actually? Is, does it mean that we just inverse each element of the matrix? No. It's quite more involved. And we are going to look at it. But before being able to compute A inverse, we need to look at something that is called matrix determinant. So we have this matrix determinant. So we have this matrix n by n, which is square. And determinant of A, so we're, we write it like this. In some textbooks, you see that they put this absolute value sign for A, but we use DET. So, which means that these are the elements of the matrix. And this becomes a general. In general, can be written as a summation from 1 to n minus 1 to the power i plus j, mij 
and AIJ. I will go, I will explain this. And this has to be like for any fixed I. So as you see, because we have the summation only over J, but we didn't talk about this I, which means that any of I's from one to N can be adopted for this, okay? But we need to fix I. Or the other, the other way around, you, we could have the summation over I, and then we need to fix J. But no worries about it. I'm just going to explain it better in, when we go through the examples, what I mean by fixing the row. For, so for, for any fix I, and I is between R and to one. So you can just choose one of these and expand this around that. So about A, I, J, we have no problem. We know what it is. It's just are the elements of A. But how about M, I, J? Do you know what they are? So we call them, so this is minor of a, I, J. So for any element A, I, J, we have a minor that is called M, I, J. And I will explain later. And if I multiply this M, I, J by this minus 1 to the power I plus J, what I get is cofactor of A, I, J. Okay? And this is exactly what we need, just this general formula. We expand around a row or a, a column of A, then we need to compute these minors of AIJ for all elements, and then multiply them by this minus 1 over 2 to the power i plus j to get these cofactors of AIJ. And then we follow this summation. So, any question up to this point? Okay. So, this is the general formula that you have it also in the slides. So, I'm just keeping it like that. What I'm going to do now is just to give you an example how we compute this. So, we are going to consider a two by two matrix, which means that N that we had is, is two. So A is A11, A12, A21, A22. And what, need to, what we need to do is to find this determinant of A, okay? And we said that this is J from one to N minus one I plus J, M, I, J, and A, I, J. So how many rows or columns do we have? Two. Okay? So then I can say determinant of A is that, so let's, uh, I decide to expand around the first element, first row, sorry. So I took this one. How do I compute this M, I, J? So this Mij is the determinant of a, of a matrix that is obtained by removing the ith row and jth column of A, okay? So Mij is the determinant of, it. so when we say determinant, it's just a number, okay? I forgot to emphasize on this. Determinant is just a number. And if we have all the elements of matrix A real, then that determinant is definitely a real number. So we have this minor Mij, how do we compute it? Is the determinant of another matrix 
And that matrix is that if we have this initial matrix A, we should remove the row A and, then col and column J of that. And what is remain? You have to compute its determinant, and that becomes MIJ. So we reduce the size of the matrix by one in each of these dimensions. So it becomes like a, if we have a n by n matrix A for computing MIJs, we have to compute the determinants of n minus one by n minus one matrices. So let's look at what, what happens in this case that we have size n2. So we have A11. So what is my i, what is my j in this formula? i is fixed because we decided to just expand around the first row. So i is 1. So I follow this. I just do the summation. As, I, as we said, so this n is 2 in this case. So we have only two expressions to, to add together. So this minus 1 to the power i is 1. So first I'm expanding around this guy. So this j is 1. So 1 plus 1, i plus j, right? And what is mij? So we should remove the first row and first column of a. So if I do that, it means that I'm removing the first row and the first column. So what does remain? a22, right? It's just a single value. So this is the minor of A11. Multiply by A11 itself. So this is M11. OK? Plus, OK, I'm going to look at the second element on the first row. I'm expanding around. Uh, so, so for a12, so my i is again 1, but j becomes 2. So minus 1 to the power 1 plus 2. So what is the m12 here? So m12 is the determinant of a after removing row 1, column 2. So this is row 1, column 2. What does remain? Is a21. Right? So this is M12 multiplied by Aij, which is i is 1, j is 2. So it's just A12. So any question up to this point? Because it's exactly the basic thing. So if you go to higher dimensional matrices, as we said, every time for computing these minors, we have to reduce the size by one. So we just do it iteratively to come to this basic two by two matrix for which we, we know how to compute the determinant, the minors. So minus one to the power two is plus one. I do not write it. And I have these two guys, A11, A22. But minus 1 to the power 3 is minus 1. So I have a minus sign here, a12, a21. Right? So this is exactly the determinant of this matrix 2 by 2. But there is a line. Yes, please. Is i always 1? Is always of the first row? No, you can decide. You could just do it all around just the second row, but it would be the same. The, the final answer would be the same. OK? Yeah. Sorry, can I ask a question? Yes, please. How is A11, A22 positive, exactly? How A11, A22? I'm an idiot. Wait, A21, A12 is positive. Yes. A is A11, A12, A21, A22. So this, this, this one is the main diagonal of the matrix always, OK? The upper left, you start and go over the diagonal. And this is the main diagonal. It doesn't matter what the dimension of the square matrix is, OK? So the trick is that I'm going to use my, my green color as the summation or positive sign. 
So what I do is that I consider this, I multiply these two and the, the other diagonal with the negative. So if you have a two by two matrix, you don't need to go through this process. You just say that the determinants of A is that the elements on the main diagonal to be multiplied with the positive sign. And from that, you need to subtract the multiplication of the other two, A12, A21, okay? It, this is exactly, it's just a trick. After you, after you learn how to do it, and you can just memorize it. how to do it. Yes, please. All like the larger matrix, when we find the minus, would we have to do like the same process but within the Exactly. For, for, in general, we need, the only thing that we have <coughs> for any dimension, not any dimension, is this. We need to follow this, okay? But this is just a trick for this guy, which is two by two. Because as, as we said, we always we reduce the, the, the size of the matrix and we come down when we want to compute the determinants. So I'm going to just give you another example for dimension three. Okay? So example, A three by three. So N is three. A, A11, A12, A13, A21, A22, A23, A31, A32, A33. So I'm going to use this general formula, and N is 3 in this case. So the determinant of A is, so I'm going to expand around this one, the first row, okay, which means that I have three elements on the first row with, in this summation, so I have three terms to add together. So the first one is minus one, i is one, j is one. Is that clear? Okay, one plus one. So a11 one, one is itself, I mean this guy here, and m11. One, one. Plus minus one, n plus 2, a12, two, the element itself, and it's minor. And then 1 plus 3, a13, three, m13. Three. As I said, you are the one who decides around which row or column you can do the expansion. But we have a square matrix. I mean, you, you can decide. It, it can be around the second column, for example, or third column. It doesn't matter. But stick to what you decide, okay? So the, the problem is boiling down to calculating these minors. We have three minors to c calculate. Okay, as we said, if we have mij, which means that we need to calculate the determinant of the matrix that is obtained by removing the ith row and jth element of the original matrix. <laughs> So in this case that I have M11, I need to compute the determinants of what? Matrix A, where I have removed the first row and the first column. So okay, this is, this is the first row, and this is the first column. What does remain is A22, A23, A32, A33. Perfect. Do, do you all agree with this? Yes. Perfect. Now I go to the next minor, that is M12. So first index telling me which row has to be removed. So first row, so second column, so this guy. And always be careful that you, you go from the left. So the remaining two by two matrix, which we need to compute its determinant is A21, A31, A23, A33. And finally, we have M13. Okay, what is it, M13? We remove first row, third column. So it's A21, A22, A31, A32. As we said, we put this absolute value to show that this is a determinant. Okay, 
I guess now it's clear what I said, that always we do just do the reduction of the size of the matrix. And if you have 10 by 10 matrix, so you need to start from 10 by 10, you get the minors, they become 9 by 9. Then for them to compute the minors, you have to go to 8 by 8. You'd reduce it to 3 by 3 or 2 by 2 that you know how to quickly compute the determinant, as you saw here. But, but don't worry, you are not going to be given such tests to 10 by 10. But be, pre be prepared for 3 by 3 or 4 by 4, okay? So can you tell me what is this determinant? How do we get the value of this? Exactly, so positive, negative, positive, negative. So we have the value, but be careful. Minus 1 to the power 2 is plus, so it's A11. Then this is A22, A33, minus A23, A32. Then this guy, minus 1 to the power 3 is minus A12. And this is like the main diagonal. A21 multiplied by A33 minus A23, A31. And then I, I write it here. So minus 1 to the power 4 is plus A13. And the determinant of this, A21, A32, minus A22, A31. So, <clears throat> I hope it was clear. Do you have any question or comments, or do you want me to repeat something? So, if you give me two minutes, I just finish this and then we leave, okay? Sorry about that. So, like for the two by two matrix, we can have a trick to compute the determinant of the three by three matrix. And the trick is that if we have this A, or just let me write it like this, determinant of A, that is A11, A1, 2A13, A21, A22, A23. So what we do is that just the first two columns, just copy them here. So the first thing that you do is this guy. So actually, you don't have this anymore. Okay? And then, start from the main diagonal. As I said, we start from the upper left. So this diagonal, so green color, which means positive sign. Then you multiply, and you want to add. Then this guy, two, and three. Do I have any other diagonal that I can go? No. Nope. Right? And for the subtraction, you start from upper right. So it's the negative. Two, three. So let's... So the first one, green one, A11, A22, A33. Plus the second green, A12, A23, A31. And then A13, A21, A32. And then minus, I put all in one parenthesis, minus is applied from the side. So it's A12, A21, A33, plus A11, A23, A32 plus A13, A22, A31. All right, so perfect. Now we have a very quick way to calculate the determinant of two by two matrices and three by three. And one by one is just, but it's a scalar, the determinant is the scalar itself.
Perfect. So <clears throat> I'm going to stop here.